Okay, we're going to look at a problem that deals with one-dimensional motion with two objects sort of in the same motion interacting with each other. So the problem reads, a hot air balloon has just lifted off and is rising at a constant rate of two meters per second, including everything in it. Suddenly, one of the passengers realizes she has left her camera on the ground. A friend picks it up and tosses it straight upward with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. If the passenger is two and a half meters above her friend when the camera is tossed, how high is she when the camera first reaches her? All right, so the first shot she has at catching it. Okay, so let's set up the problem and then let's remind ourselves the questions we have to ask to solve it. So first of all, what is our object of interest? Well, I kind of have two, and that gives me my first clue. I'm interested in the motion both of the balloon and the camera. So that right there tells us, okay, I have to pay attention. This is probably a two-object problem. So uh, the balloon is my object of interest and the camera. Okay, well, what motion am I interested with both of these? What related motion am I interested in these two objects? Well, I'm interested in the point that the camera is thrown until the time that the camera reaches the balloon. Okay, so that my friend can catch it. All right, so those are the two times I'm interested, and I'm interested in two objects. So, one-dimensional motion, two objects, and it's useful to think about what's related about these two objects. Well, if I'm interested in the time the camera is thrown to so the time that it reaches the balloon, the time of that motion between the two objects is the same. What's the balloon doing during that time, and what's the camera doing during that time? So the time of the balloon during this, between these two is equal to the time of the camera. The balloon's not traveling one second later. The instant the camera is thrown is when I start caring about it. The balloon travels a certain distance, and certain motion, and so does the camera. So that's one piece that's the same. The second is if the camera is caught, then at the end of the motion, when it reaches the balloon, the final position of the balloon has to equal the final position of the camera. So thinking about those ideas, those relationships, as you conceptualize the problem, will be helpful when we go to solve it. All right, so we have to define the world. So here's our balloon. And here's where the camera is going to start. It's got a little flash on it. I'm, that looks like a camera. We have to define the origin. So where should we set x equal to 0? And I think it's helpful in this problem to set x equal to 0 at the camera. We can set it at the balloon, but we might as well pick one set it at the camera. Okay, we have two objects. We have two lists that we have to generate. So we have information about the balloon and we're going to have information about the camera. All right, so x initial of the balloon, x final of the balloon, v initial of the balloon, v final of the balloon, acceleration of the balloon, and time of the balloon. And similarly for the camera, x initial of the camera, x final of the camera, v initial of the camera, v final of the camera, acceleration of the camera, time of the camera. Okay, so x initial of the balloon. Well, if this is the origin, the balloon is two and a half meters above the origin. Just make sure that's correct in my problem. Yep, two and a half meters above the origin. x final, we don't know, but we do know it's equal to x final of the camera. So let's just call those both x of f, and we'll see why that's helpful in a little bit. V initial of the balloon, well, it's saying it's, it's moving at a constant rate of 2 meters per second. So if it's a constant rate, then my final is also 2 meters per second, and my acceleration is 0. And we don't know the time, but similarly, those are the same time. So let's just rename that time t. So I only have one variable I'm looking at. All right, what about the camera? Well, the initial position of the camera is zero. The final position of the camera, we don't know, but 
we renamed that x of f. The initial velocity of the camera, it says the velocity is thrown with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. Now speed only gives us the magnitude of the velocity in this case, but I know it's positive because it's got to be thrown up to the balloon. And the final velocity, I don't know. Does the camera accelerate? Yeah, it's in free fall once it leaves the hand. So that acceleration, although it's not given in the problem, it's implied. And we don't know the time, but we did call that t. All right. So we're interested in how high the balloon is when the camera first reaches her. Well, that's final position of the balloon. So if we think about our final position relationship, and this is sort of my go-to, like I've said, I don't have time, I don't have acceleration, but I do have some other information. That's sort of my go-to. Let's just use it. We can see if how it helps us later. X final is X final of the balloon, which we've called X of F. That equals X initial, which is 2.5, plus V initial, which is 2.0, times time, which I don't know, which is T, plus 1 half 0 T squared. So I'm left with a relationship of X final equals 2.5 times 2.0t. I don't have x final and I don't have time. And in order for me to solve an equation with two unknowns, I need two equations with the same two unknowns. So is x final related to anything else? Is t related to anything else? Yeah, the camera. So now we can go after maybe x final of the camera. So if I look at x final of the camera using the same relationship, well, x, x final of the camera is x of f. x initial is equal to 0 plus v initial 10 times t plus 1 half negative 9.8 t squared. So I'm just going to simplify that. I get x final is equal to 10t minus 4.9 t squared. Well, I can't solve for either of those variables using just that relationship, but now I can recognize that these are the same x final, they're the same position. So I can set these two equations equal to each other. So I'm left with 2.5 plus 2t equals 10t minus 4.9 t squared. And if I rearrange that a little bit, and move everything to one side, I end up with, um, let's rearrange it this way, I end up with 0 is equal to minus 2, I'm putting everything on this side, minus 2.5 plus 8t minus 4.9t squared. <clears throat> All right, well that's a quadratic, and I can solve a quadratic using the quadratic formula. So, as a reminder, that means that t is equal to plus or minus, plus or minus, the opposite of b, well there's my b, 8, no, it doesn't equal that, it equals a minus b, plus or minus, the square root of b, 8 squared, minus 4 times a, minus 4.9, times c minus 2.5 all over 2 times a minus 4.9. And if I solve for that quadratic equation, I get two solutions. I have my plus and my minus. I get t equals 0 0.42 seconds and t equals 1.2 seconds. Now, those are two solutions that make sense. I mean, time always has to be positive. So why do I have two solutions that are legit? A lot of times we do these problems. One of our times are negative. It's easy to throw it out. Well, we want to keep in mind what's actually happening here. This camera is going to go up and then it's going to come back down. The balloon is going to pass it twice. So this 
is the first passing while the camera's on its way up. And this <clears throat> is the second time the balloon passes it. All right. So we're interested in that first time in terms of the problem itself. And so we can use this time then to plug into either one of our equations. They should be the same. The final position is the same. So x final is equal to 2.5 plus 2 times 0 0.42. And that gives us an x final of 3.34 meters. All right, so the key here is recognizing the relationship between these two objects in terms of oftentimes their position and their time. But it could be any relationship. We could have them meeting, or when one achieves the same velocity, for example. But it's recognizing those relationships, finding the resources to solve the equations, because I needed two other, I needed these variables in another equation to solve it, and recognizing that they were related to the camera's motion, and then going after that camera's motion. All right, good job.